In terms of process, because I love colour, I shoot on film. Film allows me to get a, a really rich palette of colours, far more basic than the nuanced colours you get in digital photography. When you're talking about a block of colour, it really is almost like it's been painted. In terms of my process, I work in quite a sort of a rigid way. I will set up the photograph. Once I feel we're in a pretty good place with the lighting, I will take a Polaroid. And the Polaroid is a way to see how the tones are working, to see if it's properly exposed. It gives me a rough guide of how the final image will come out. A Polaroid is always a sketch. It's never a good idea to sort of dwell and dwell and dwell on the Polaroid. You need to move from the Polaroid quite rapidly onto the real stuff, which is the film. The film is then taken to my lab and they process the film, as I said, in quite a sort of uh, intense way with my direction. And then from, from the negative that is produced, which is this material here, they make a contact sheet, which is created simply by putting the two things together and exposing a blank sheet of photographic paper under an enlarger with a negative placed on top. The contact sheet is also a sketch and again is treated in that kind of way, quite brutally, quite quickly, edited through, things are scored out, notes are made and this is then a working document for how I will make the final print. The contact sheets that we are uh, exhibiting in the show are the actual contact sheets that I worked on through my career and seeing them again after being in these archive boxes for so many years. It's kind of beautiful to see them with these original markings, trying to make sense of my thinking of why this frame and not that frame and, and why this one is crossed out and this one is not and so forth. So this is a really interesting group to discuss in terms of my process because it's very much to do with how I work with an actress for their performance. The image here is a woman screaming over her breakfast and what she's screaming about doesn't matter. To me, it's just this sort of almost like Elizabeth Taylor kind of rage. Getting the actress to scream was a mixture of actual screaming and some fake kind of like ah, and holding the mouth in the position. And of course, I didn't want to get it only on Polaroid. So when I felt the lighting was right and I had the right lens on the camera and the angle was right and that she was, she was ready to go, we then repeated the action as is the way I like to work, which is to repeat and repeat and repeat the action until we find something that is a perfect photographic interpretation of the action I'm trying to express. So this is a photograph of a $30 million diamond ring between someone's fake veneered teeth. So the idea was this combination of the real diamond and the fake teeth. Once I set the shot up, I then asked the model to angle the diamond ring and I was watching as the various kind of flickers and flames flew off the ring as reflections. And you can see in this contact sheet, if you go through it, that certain points you get this incredible kind of like stars of reflections coming off the ring. It's very dazzling actually. I love the way that it has my surname built into the labeling system, which is something that's quite unusual. I also love that on the first four frames, the model has some lipstick on her chin that's clearly been removed by the makeup artist who's seen it. And of course, the other thing I love is the way that the smile, the kind of the grimace of the smile has been kept exactly the same through every frame. This is a really interesting contact sheet because I've asked the model to really close her eyes, pretend that she's asleep. And then on these last four frames, I've asked her to open her eyes. I'm trying to capture that moment where you're sort of the eyes are just refocusing to the day. And I can see that I've cut one of the frames out, which must be one of the frames I thought was successful. I love the sort of asymmetry of this contact sheet with the two frames on the left and this sort of rather menacing black. But this single frame cut out, you can see very roughly by me with, with scissors while I've been editing, is beautiful. It has this flying butterfly whizzing past Lily's face as the shutter has been released. And the, the butterfly is perfectly formed, slightly with some motion, as you'd expect at the speed this butterfly is flying through the frame. It's a wonderful accidental image. This is another large format contact sheet with two five by four inch negatives. I love how, uh, how this looks like a kind of crime scene without the model. Quite often I'll photograph the set after all the action, just to kind of document the position of everything. 
And uh, what I love about these two is the, the very simple difference of this frame having the lamp on and this one having the lamp off. I think within this page is something sort of incredibly poignant about this empty space of the spilt wine and the light off and then back on. So what's interesting about this Polaroid is that it can see that I've indicated with my pen that there should be smoke coming out of the toaster. And then we can see on the contact sheet where I've experimented with various smoke bombs in the toaster to create the effect that has been suggested here. So here's a small selection of some of the Polaroids from the exhibition. I've selected them each for their own very peculiar or particular reason. This one, for example, I love how when sort of figuring out the shot, I, for some reason, with my scissors, cut around the top of the car. It's, it's created this sort of, kind of rather strange, almost like sort of something from a, a Renaissance altar. This one has suffered some chemical damage as it's been pulled out of the camera. But I really love these strange colors that have been produced in that process of stripping some of the emulsion off and some of it being uh, overexposed and some of it being underexposed and it's created these weird colors. And this is just a very interesting image which uh, is actually the cover of the new book, Please Please Return Polaroid. The image is of a, a bank robber's clown mask that's been discarded in sort of the heat of the moment. Uh, and finally this Polaroid is a great souvenir from a project I did with Gilbert and George at their house in uh, Fournier Street in the East End of London. We designed together this narrative of a stranger arriving at their home and spending the weekend with them. And this is the first shot I shot with them, with Gilbert at the window and George at the door greeting the stranger. <laughs>